if you do some flowers, people are like, oh, that's Allie. Yeah, you know? I like, definitely worked on like distinguishing my style and brand and that's, I love that about my myself and my branding. Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's interview, I'm talking to Allie Kay, who is teaching us the ins and outs of floral illustration. So if you've seen Allie's work before, you know that it's got a distinct look, and you know that everybody is trying to draw like Allie Kay. So in this lesson, she's walking us through all her tips and tricks and giving us a little insight into how to draw like her. So let's jump right in. Allie, welcome back to the show. I'm super excited to be back. I feel like last time you were on here, like it wasn't that long ago, but so much has happened since then that we need to have a little catch up session. A lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, for those people who might have missed the first one or who don't know who you are, can you give us a little rundown before we get into all this? You know, this is like my least favorite question because it's so hard to just answer in two seconds. Um, I'm a Dallas-based artist that specializes in black and white illustrations, mainly florals. It's like artist, author, podcaster, app designer, teacher. Like, there's just too many things. I could keep going on, but... We just can't put you in a box, which is fine. Yeah, I hate being boxes, so... Yep. That, what I can say, though, is that, like, I think people who know you know, like... It, if you do some flowers, people are like, oh, that's Allie. Yeah, you know? I like, definitely worked on like distinguishing my style and brand. And that's, I love that about my myself and my branding. So I have seen you in person since the last time we talked, which was a lot of fun. I went on a book tour for my Florals by Hand book. So the florals that I'm going to be talking about are inside this book. And then little tips and tricks are also um, go further into detail in, in this book. So I've come out with that and spiral version, which wasn't available last time we talked. And then I also have come out with a coloring book, which is fun. I designed an app. So it's just like adding to... Well, I will link to all of the things down below that you're talking about so people can check you out in all of those places. But um, before we get into our mini lesson and everything, I think we should play your game. Oh, you are a sneaky girl. <laughs> Maybe people don't know, but Allie does this thing, fast questions with other artists, and she did it to me. And so yeah. I think it's time I do it back. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. It's just like, I tell people all the time, I would be a really great, like, first dater because it's like, all we would do is ask questions. It, well, well, I mean, I think you'd have two opinions of whether that's a good first date or a bad first date. <laughs> You're just like I... peppering somebody with questions. <laughs> Go! <laughs> um, I, yeah, I've never, like, dated. I've been with my husband since I was 14, so we really, like, never dated. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. What's your favorite place you've ever visited? Ooh, if you, uh, Paris. Who is your art crush? Picasso. What's worse, laundry or dishes? <laughs> Both. I don't do any of them. Probably dishes. If you had to go without one of these, which would you choose? A ruler or an eraser? Forever. I can't, so I can't have it forever. A ruler. Well, man, yeah, a ruler. I'm pretty good at like eyeballing it, but then I also really don't need an eraser because I hate using pencil. I just like like to go right into it. it builds confidence, people. Cookies or chips? Hmm. Cheez-Its? Crackers? I, called, I would call those closer to chips then. Okay. Salty. You're salty yeah. over sweet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, do you have your phone with you? I do. Who is the last person you followed on Instagram? Okay, latest. This is really interesting. I don't even know. Oh, I followed James. He's like inspirational. James Wedmore. Yeah. We'll see. Business guy. Need, need some inspiration in my life at the moment. <laughs> okay, last question. 
Would you rather be able to copy paste in real life or undo in real life? Oh, uh, these are good. Um, Cause I'm always like double tapping everything to like undo, like, cause that's what you can do on the iPad. Probably undo. Okay. Yeah. I like to, when I ask people this question, I like to go really deep with it. Cause like, if you I really know. think about it, there's a lot of different ways you could go. Like you could copy paste money. You could copy paste oh. food. Right. Okay. Now if you're like thinking about it that way. <laughs> It's going to bother you yeah. all day now. Because now it's like undo. Like, do you have a, a lot of regrets, Ali? Like, I don't know. So I had like, this conversation oh. with somebody recently about how uh, it kind of is like telling whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. Because it's like, if you're a pessimist, you're like, oh, I'm going to undo that thing I did. But if, yeah. you're a pe if you're an optimist, you're like, I had a really great time that day. I'm going to redo that day. You know, like yeah. optimism versus, yeah, it's an interesting one. It's a good one. Right now I'm struggling with some, um, yeah, if you would have asked me this probably like two weeks ago, I probably would have said copy and paste right now. I'm in this like weird end of year funk, very like people think that I might have it all together, but everyone goes through their struggles and end of year. It's always that like weird time of self doubt. Everyone goes through it. Like I'm going through it right now. So that's probably why I said undo today. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm tempted to dive into that, that topic with you right now because <laughs> I'm on it right now. Yeah, I am it's with you. So at this point in our conversation, Allie and I went off on like a crazy tangent talking about some really real and honest artist entrepreneurial burnout stuff that both of us were just not planning to talk about and ended up talking about for like 40 minutes. Um, and so I was going to cut it out of the video because it's sort of a really real and honest and personal conversation that Ali and I got into. Uh, but I think it's really valuable for a lot of people. That being said, I didn't want to keep it in this video because this video is supposed to be a lesson about how to draw florals, which we're getting to. So if you want to watch the rest of the conversation Ali and I had about burnout and all of that stuff, you can click up here and check that out. But if you're here just for the floral lesson, just keep watching. It's coming in a second. Okay, so got fast questions out of the way. Um, and I know that in our last interview, we did more like interviewee questions with you. So I think we should just jump into the lesson. I know everybody's going to want to see your floral demonstrations. And then we can chat a little more after. All right, the ins and outs of drawing florals. I'm going to do some quick demonstrations on how to draw a flower looking from it above and then drawing a flower looking from it from the side, same flower, just two different angles. And then just kind of some tips and tricks that I like to do while drawing and things that I have figured out drawing flowers all this stuff, let's go. All right, so we're gonna draw a wild rose. And hopefully y'all can see this. You just wanna break down every rose in its most simplest form, or just any flower in its most simplest form. Just take it step by step, look at every little part first, instead of trying to look at the whole flower. So we're gonna start in the center, and you're going to start with a circle, Draw some detailed lines in the center of that circle. Then you're going to draw lines outside from that circle, making them different links all the way around. I like to say, don't overthink these centers and I will tell you and show you why. And then once you have this, you're gonna draw little circles on the ends of all of the straight lines that you just drew. Like so. You feel like you have lost your first step that initial circle go in this is kind of tip number one go in and scribble i don't know what any other 
high shade. I like to say scribble. Just along that lower part. And then now that makes that first step pop more. Now we're going to draw the petals. And this is sometimes the scariest thing that you can do, but it's not. It's really simple. You just break it down. You want to, if you're looking at a flower, you want to draw the petals that you can fully see first. So if there's petals that are underneath or you can't see all the way, you're drawing those, you're going to draw those last. So you want to draw your angle, anchor petals first. Those are the petals that you can fully see every single edge. I like to kind of do that and then make them on opposite ends so it's easier for you to overlap the other petals. So we're going to start on one side. Watch how easy and simple this is. We're going to draw two C's and an S. You ready? I'm going to draw one C. Do you see that curve? Another C. And an S curve. It's that simple. Break down every petal like that. Do it on the other side. C, C, S. So now you have your anchor petals. So now you, every other petal will either overlap or underlap to complete the flower. So we're just going to keep going with all the petals, like so. And now you have a wild rose. Pretty simple. And you can shade this if you want. With this purposes, I'm just not going to, because I don't want it to get too crowded. So if we were to draw this same flower on its side, we can do so just drawing the same C's and S curves just a little bit differently. So we're going to do a side view. We're going to start with the under belly of the flower. So if the stem was to come out, it would come out this way. So we'll do the C and then we're going to draw The upper. So this essentially is this part. How it dips, it's showing this dip. And then we're going to draw the centers. So it's these straight lines and then the circles, like so. And then now we're going to draw the petals. There's one, there's two, and don't forget these dips. There's three, and you can sometimes draw a fold to make it look like it's like folding upwards. So we have these two, and then these two. So essentially, I should have probably needed this one more, like right here but it doesn't have to be the exact same flower. But this is essentially an easy way to draw a flower on its side view. So like this part here is the underneath of the petal. Hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes it's really hard to teach to a screen because I can't give you any feedback or I don't get any feedback. So I'm just gonna, Nod my head and say, yes, you did a great job. Okay, I like to do my centers very loose, very funky, I guess, but very loose is a good term because if you start with the center of the flower and your scale is completely off, maybe your your petals are a little to the left or sometimes they're a little to the right or your petals are way too big and your center is super, super tiny, 
it's easier to go in and add a larger center to make the scale look easier on the eye. So say um, we do, like here's my center of the flower. And then I'm coming in. I'm not quite sure what flower I'm drawing, but for reference. I'm coming in and I'm drawing petals. To me, this looks weird because I have all of these petals and then a teeny tiny center. But the minute I come in and make the center bigger, now, do you see how like now that looks more to scale. So don't scratch your flower and say, oh, this looks horrible. Look at your scales. It, are your petals too small? Are your to your center or is your center too small to your petals? Sometimes just switching that scale now makes that flower look completely different and more pleasing to the eye. And so that is a tip for you. Another tip is when we're doing flowers like this, it's super easy to just kind of get in the motion of going all the way around. And I sometimes, I started to do that here, but that's not as natural to look at. So make sure that you add in gaps. So like, Someone would probably want to put a, a puddle there, but don't. Add in these gaps to where a petal doesn't have to start where you ended the last petal that you drew. Again, hopefully that makes sense. Yes, Sally, that makes sense. So here's another gap. That's just going to help give it some breathing room. It's not going to look like you just like went around. It's going to have some personality to it. Another tip, probably the last one that we'll have. I wish you could ask me questions. If you have any questions, please message me. Put it in the comments on this YouTube video and I will help you out. But there's some flowers like a peony or um, magnolias, there's some flowers that just have a really, really dense center and they're like, there's no way I'm going to draw that. Like you can't, like how do you break down every little petal? I like to do continuous line drawings for those. So I just like to start and just scribble again scribble, lean. A carnation can sometimes look like this. But if you start to do that and then start to have your petals come out like so. See, your brain wants to initially be like, oh, I stopped there. Now I want to do another petal. Don't do it. Break it up, break it up. So by doing that, then it gives it that really dense, cool effect. Hopefully you have enjoyed the ins and outs of drawing florals. Awesome. Well, I think that, uh, like for me, the hardest part when I'm drawing flowers is always 
I can draw it on one angle, but then if I try and recreate it in like a composition and have it on different angles and stuff, that's the hardest for me. So I think that that explanation is definitely like, if nothing else, that will help people so much. I'm so glad. Um, okay, Ali, rattle off the places that people can find you and get your stuff and all of those things. The easiest thing, you can go to my website, AliKDesign.com or Instagram, AliKDesign.com. Click the link in the bio and it will take you to all of the links for everything right there. Amazing. And uh, if anybody wants to grab your books, they're all available on Amazon, right? Amazon's probably the easiest, but if you want it signed, you can get it, a signed book on my website. Nice. Yeah. And if anybody's watching this and just went through that lesson and they were like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I love it. Want to know how to do more flowers. That's exactly what's in all of Ali's books. So you need to grab them if this is something that interests you because they're great. I've got them all. You can't see them, but they're all on my shelf up here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ali. Well, thank you so much again for coming on here. Um, it's always a pleasure. And I'm sure that you know, by this time next year, we, we just seem to always do one like once a yeah, year. You'll have all these, all, a lot more things to talk about. <laughs> let's do it. Can't wait. All right. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.